kind of a nice day today, so I thought I would film outside instead of in the shop. It's also a little windy. I don't know how that's going to affect the audio. So if it's bad, I apologize. But the weather's great, so I kind of don't apologize. So I had a problem with my minivan, and it's a little older. We've had it for several years, but it's paid off, and it's run great, so I've seen no need to replace it. Recently, the uh, torque converter went out, and it's a fairly it's a fairly involved process to replace. So, of course, to do that, you've got to slide under the van, and you would normally use a mechanic creeper, which I did, until it broke. Now, if you haven't noticed, I'm not exactly a fitness model. I like tacos, and I make no apology for that. I also have a desk job, so I guess you could say I'm a little uh, rotund, maybe plus size. Anyway, when I had to work under the van, my old mechanic creeper broke. And it was old. I'd had it for probably 10 years. So I ran to Harbor Freight and got a new one. But I had a problem. I'm under the weight rating for their creeper, but I still broke the wheels. Three of the wheels, in fact. And this was all within about an hour and a half of bringing it home. Now, I probably should have just taken it back, but I got busy with other things and I forgot about it and I lost the receipt. So rather than just going and buying another one, I decided to make a new one, a new creeper. But I decided if I'm going to make a creeper from scratch and I want it to hold up to all of these things, I'm just going to go full on ridiculous. Like this, it's going to be so overbuilt that it could hold the car itself if it needed to. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to make a ridiculously overbuilt ultimate mechanic creeper. So I started by cutting some one and a half by two inch rectangular tubing to 40 inches long. I needed two of those. And my chop saw obviously is getting a little dull. I need to replace that blade, but didn't have time, so I made do. Then I took some half inch by two inch rectangular tube and I cut four pieces of that 19 and a half inches long and then I drilled two holes. These holes are so that I can screw a piece of plywood to the frame. Cleaned up the holes, cleaned up the edges, and then I began welding the frame together. And for the half inch bars, I had one on either end, and then the middle two I just spaced evenly. Tried to keep it square as best I could, and I'm just using my little Harbor Freight flux core welder for this part, so it's nothing fancy. I should also mention that I'm just learning to weld, so if this doesn't look professional, well, it's because I'm not so deal with it. After the top was all welded, I flipped it over and welded the bottom. I've got to say I've been really impressed with what I've been able to do with this little flux core welder. Of course then I needed to clean up my welds. Then I took some 3 16 inch steel plate that's 6 inches wide and I cut 6 pieces 7 inches long. Now it's, it's a little beyond the capacity of my chop saw, so I did have to flip the pieces over. Then with my Milwaukee porta band I took those 7 inch pieces and sliced an inch and a half off, so I ended up with 6 pieces that were 4.5 by 7, and those leftovers will become the gussets for the wheel brackets. I then took six more and just ripped those right in half. These will be the back side of the wheel bracket. I took the casters and marked out where I needed the holes to be for the bolts to hold these in place. These wheels are rated to 155 pounds each. Then I just took a punch and marked a center point for the drill bit. Did this on all six plates. Took those to the drill press and I drilled about halfway through and then added more oil just trying to uh, keep this drill bit alive I guess. And I went just a little bigger than a quarter of an inch with these holes so that I could move the wheel, the casters around a little bit if I needed to. So with those holes drilled 
I took those plates and the narrower ones, tacked them together, and then came back with my stick welder to weld on both sides. I've used 6011 electrodes for this, and these were just the cheap ones you can get at Harbor Freight, but I like these because it, they're really easy to maintain the arc, and they seem to do really well. So for each wheel bracket, I welded it up on both sides with the stick welder, which might be overkill, but like I said in the beginning, I wanted this to be ridiculously overbuilt. I didn't want to have this break like the previous one did. And I repeated this for all six wheel brackets. Then I needed to clean those up, and because of where the wheel brackets are going to go, there is the chance that you'll bump up against them. So besides just cleaning up the weld, I also took this chance to kind of round over that corner so that if you did bump into it, you're not hitting a sharp edge. With the wheel brackets complete, I tacked them in place and then just did a long seam weld around all four edges to get that connected to the frame. And the wheel brackets, I mounted one at each corner and then one right in the center on each of the inch and a half by two inch rails. Then I wanted to make a handle for this, so I took a piece of half inch round bar, marked two spots with my bandsaw, heated it up with my map torch, and then just use a piece of uh, three quarter inch pipe to bend it. Now the three quarter inch pipe didn't work for the second bend, so I had this, I don't even know what to call it, a thing I put together to bend it. And it kind of worked. So I welded the handle in place, and this is at the head of the creeper. And yeah, there's a big mess behind me. My patio's a mess. That's on my to-do list for this summer. So with the brackets all in place, of course, more cleanup, more grinding. And then I welded the gussets in place. For that, I just used those cutoffs that I had had. Cut them in half, cut some angles into those, and then just matched them up. They, they weren't really put in accurately. My concern there was just to give it a little more strength, and so I just cut those angles, matched them where they look good, and welded those in place, and again, more cleanup. Now I also, on the wheel brackets, I took the time to round over the corners, just because I thought that's probably the part that you're most likely to accidentally kick with your foot. Cleaned the whole thing up with some mineral spirits, covered the whole thing with some Rust-Oleum primer, and once the primer was dry, I came back with some Rust-Oleum, I think they called it like glossy automotive paint. Supposedly it's a little tougher. Gave it two coats of that and let it dry overnight. And then on the wheel brackets, I still wanted to soften them up a little bit more, so I masked off the base of those and then using some, I think it's called Plasti Dip or something like that. It's, it's a sprayable rubber. I sprayed that over the wheel brackets. Now the downside to this is it's not meant to be permanent. You can just peel it off, but I didn't find anything better locally, so that worked. And eventually those are that, that's going to wear off, but that's okay. And because it can peel off, I had to use a razor blade along the edge of the masking tape so that pulling up the masking tape didn't pull up the rubber. Now for the backrest, I took some half inch exterior grade plywood, just in case I leave this out in the rain accidentally. I cut that to 40 inches by 18 and a half inches. And I painted it with some exterior paint. Again, this is really just in case I leave it out in the rain because sometimes I forget to put things away. Now I used some 3 inch foam 
and it was kind of a pain to cut. I didn't have great tools for cutting it. The utility blades seemed to do okay, but it wasn't great. For the headrest, I took two pieces and using some foam safe spray adhesive, I glued those together and I just used regular 3 inch for the main back. I did forget to film where I upholstered that. It should be noted, I've never done any type of upholstery before, so if this looks heinous, it's my first time. And this is just some marine vinyl that I picked up from Joanne Fabrics, and I use an upholstery stapler that I got from Harbor Freight. It's only like 25 bucks, and it actually worked really well. I had to get some help from my wife to get this all in place. It's not great, I'll admit, but like I said, it was my first time, and actually the first time my wife had helped with upholstery as well, so we're learning together. But it does seem to hold in place really well, and it's actually really, really comfortable. You could take a nap on there. So with all that done, I then mounted the casters. Nothing fancy, just quarter 20 bolts with washers on the top and lock nuts on the bottom. I then screwed that backrest to the frame. And because I'm trying to learn sign painting, I thought it would be fun to add some flames. So I got out my one shot and some Mac brushes and just kind of played with painting flames on it. I'm not great at this at all, but I do kind of like how it turned out. I, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings nerd and I kind of felt like it looked like Sauron's book where he has the picture of the Balrog. That's kind of what these flames reminded me of, so I was pretty happy with them. Now one thing you'll notice that I haven't done yet is there's nowhere, there's no container, there's no tray for your tools as some Mechanics Creepers will have. So I made one here using the leftover CDX plywood. And I did use Type Bond 3 again in case I left this in the rain. And the reason I stuck that cup in there was continuing with this idea of making this ridiculous, I wanted to add a cup holder to it. For the cup holder, I copied a, a technique that I've seen Jimmy Duresta use on some of his signs where he'll cut out the inside of something on the bandsaw and then just glue that cut back together to make it solid again. I painted it black to match. I added casters just like I did on the main body itself. And then I drilled two holes for some rare earth magnets. I glued those in place. The reason for the magnets is so that this tray can attach to the creeper and follow you along, but you can pull it away from the body of the creeper if you need to. To attach the cup holder, I just used a single butt hinge and a couple short screws so that it wouldn't poke all the way through. The hinge really is just so that you can flip it out of the way when you don't need it if you want to hold more tools or just because it's kind of fun. <laughs> and if you live around Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, it holds a Maverick Extra Large Cup perfectly. I like Maverick. And here we go. This is the finished product. This is my extremely overbuilt, ridiculous, ultimate mechanics creeper. It's really strong. It's really comfortable. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's very heavy, and I like it. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more of the things that I do in my shop, please subscribe. We'll catch you next time.